To do the post processing, start CFD post. And you can do that by right clicking on results and edit um, as we did before. And you will have a refresh symbol here. Uh, I, I've already started CFD post, which is where I have the tick. And then if I go to CFD post, um, I'll turn on my velocity magnitude contours. I can turn off these, um, those lines that I drew. And then if I come to the graphics window and type in Z, it'll zoom in and I'll zoom out a little bit to have a view like that. And it looks like the velocity uh, boundary layer hasn't changed and the velocity uh, distribution hasn't changed, which is what we expect because we have set density to be constant and that decouples mass and momentum equations from energy. And let's uh, look at the temperature contours. So I will um, turn off the velocity magnitude contours. I'll right click on it and I'll say duplicate. And I will say T contours for temperature contours. Okay. I will double click on it to make sure I'm editing it. And I'll change the variable to temperature. Okay. Um, and you see that the, you know, you get a boundary, a thermal boundary layer similar to the velocity boundary layer. If I look at the temperature range here, it's in terms of Celsius and um, supposedly one can change it to Kelvin by going into edit options, units, changing temperature to Kelvin and saying apply. Okay. Um, but that doesn't seem to have the desired effect and I'm not sure why that is the case. Um, the workaround would be to create your own um, variable in terms of Kelvin under expressions and then a variable from that expression. I won't do that over here. And if I look at the, the boundary layer thickness, I would like to compare it to the, the velocity, the thermal boundary layer thickness. I would like to compare it to the uh, velocity boundary layer thickness. So I will go to two panes and I need to deselect this and select it again. Then I'll get the same view in both and I'll say pan and I'll, I can move this up. And you see that the, the, the thermal boundary layer and the velocity boundary layer are really look very similar, which is what we expect for a Prandtl number of one because the rate at which heat diffuses uh, is uh, the same as the rate at which the, um, the momentum diffuses. So that checks with our expectations. I will go back to a single pane view. Again, do Z, um, zoom out a little bit. And then I can look at the boundary conditions uh, on temperature at this boundary and this boundary. And if I convert those values to Kelvin, that looks like around 400 Kelvin. So uh, it seems like our boundary conditions over here and here are satisfied and at the plate, it's looking like around 300 Kelvin. Of course, I could go in and probe the values to make sure that is indeed the case. I won't do that in the interest of time. And let's take a look at the temperature profiles. So I'll go to my velocity profiles and duplicate that. Right click, duplicate. I'll say T profiles. Okay and then double click on T profiles, make sure you're editing that and change uh, the variable on the horizontal axis to temperature and say apply. And you can see that, you know, the thermal boundary layer thickness are on 0.05 at, uh, this is, you know, at uh, x equal to x over L equals 0.8, very close to the end of the plate. So that checks out with our expectation for the boundary layer thickness. Now it's better to plot this in terms of a non-dimensional temperature, which is defined um, in this fashion. Let me show you. So you can define 
a non-dimensional temperature as Tw minus T over Tw minus T infinity. And this will be zero at the wall and one in the free stream. So I did that and let me show you my uh, the corresponding plot. So the variation is the same. Uh, what I did was I created an expression called T non-dime expression and 300 is the value at the wall. That's my unit. Um, that's the temperature and the denominator is negative. Um, and then I get the, my non-dimensional temperature. I created a variable from that and then I plotted that variable and then I made this plot pretty. So if I go to outline and go to T profiles pretty, what I did was I went in, gave it custom access labels. I gave it custom legend names under a line display. Then on the chart display, I went in and, and changed the font sizes. I changed where the legend is des displayed, um, the line sizes and, and so on. So if I go to the chart viewer, this is what I get. And, and the legend, I gave it in terms of the REX, which is, you can get from X. Um, and, 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 you know, people often report the location in terms of REX rather than X. So I did that. And that's the kind of plot you want to include in a report. So that looks good. So I'll file safe project.